Well, let's bring in former Conservative Minister David Mellor. David, I mean, discipline, is it a word that the Conservative Party know anymore? Did this all start with Brexit and that everyone suddenly thought that having their name in print or their voice on the radio meant they were the most important overlords on earth and they've forgotten what it is to be part of a no, team? No, I, I think the Conservative Party deserves to go to the knacker's yard <laughs> and it deserves to be or maybe to be more kinder, put down in a way an amiable vet would do. And hopefully it will re-emerge as something better. I mean, you know, you have a ludicrous moment today when the deputy chairman of the party resigns. Now he says he wish he hadn't and he'd like to come back. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's childish, really, isn't it? Try to, if you can, David, to put your finger on the central thing that has been wrong with the Tory party, uh, I, I would suggest probably way back until Boris, but certainly since they started sort of uh, revolving prime ministers like there's no tomorrow, you know, what have we had now? Three, is it? In, in uh, less than two years. Uh, yeah. And now we've got this guy that's not elected. And as I was saying earlier, if I was to answer this question, I would say that the problem with the Conservative Party under Rishi Sunak is it's not Conservative. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily go down that track. What I think it isn't is strong enough. Uh, it doesn't have uh, a mission, uh, and it is incapable of putting across a credible reason to be in government. Rishi Sunak is a very bright man, but he's not obviously a particularly strong man in terms of his willpower. And, of course, he has been made uh, uh, prime minister after virtually no experience of anything very much. And so the Tories really need a strong, powerful leader with real personality. Now, they haven't got that. I, I, I think back to 1997, and I think back to John Major, who was in similar travails, and uh, uh, the opportunity was given to him to stand aside uh, and let a stronger leader fight the next election. He didn't do so. And as a consequence, uh, what might have been not necessarily a winning position, I think the Tories were, as they are now, in a hopeless position, but if, say, Michael Heseltine had fought the 1997 election as a Conservative, uh, then it would have been a closer run thing, because the problem with this election is the Tories are looking to lose, not just this coming election, but the one after it as well, and that's not much fun. But where, what is the reason, a good compelling reason for people to vote Conservative? Uh, there always used to be lots of good compelling reasons when, why people should vote Conservative when Margaret Thatcher was around. There aren't too many now. Isn't the problem when you say that this Conservative Party doesn't have a mission, that actually it's got way too many missions and way too many people jostling for positions, saying that their mission is the mission that the party should be on? And actually, frankly, what has happened in answer to Kevin's question is where it used to be a party of the right wing, it's a party of no wing at all, any wing goes, and no one quite knows what it is any day of the week, and it should be broken up for parts and just most of it go to Nigel Farage. I, I, I don't know that I agree with that, but what I do agree with is that the leadership of the Conservative Party is weak, that Rishi Sunak is a very intelligent man, well-educated, and he would make a very good senior cabinet minister. But Rishi Sunak is not a leader. So the question is, are the Conservative Party just going to um, wander along um, a, a path downhill until they lose an election? Or are they going to try and save themselves? Now, in 1997, you know, most people probably don't remember Michael Heseltine now, but he would have been a very effective leader at that time because he was a strong, powerful man. But he could be a strong, powerful woman, as Mrs Thatcher was. But unfortunately, if you think about changing leader, who is there? I personally think it's an interesting idea about Kimi Badenoch, but one thing is certain, it's absolutely, there's no way the Conservatives are going to win the next election. Uh, I think, it, you know, it's always dangerous to write things off in politics, which is a fast-changing game. But I don't think, I don't think that uh, the Conservatives have any chance, and one of the main reasons why they don't have any chance of winning the next election is that they don't deserve to. They've done nothing to merit 
the support of a public that must be tried to despair by some of their antics. So they either wait to be put down or uh, they try one last chance to find a leader who would capture the public imagination. Um, I think that not would capture the public imagination. It doesn't mean she'd necessarily be a very good prime minister because she, like Sunak, you know, these people have hardly any experience, not at the sharp end of top politics, but um, the Conservative Party at the moment is in a hopeless state and it's sad. So, David, given that I think we all agree uh, the uh, Tories' chance of winning the next election are slim to uh, absolute zero, <laughs> below zero probably, but are you, in what you were just saying about Kemi Badenoch, are, are you agreeing with Sir Simon Clark that it's worth a roll of the dice uh, to get a new leader in that could maybe uh, capture the public's imagination because perhaps Kemi would stand a better chance than Rishi? Yes, I mean, I think Clark has been... Uh, attacked for his pains uh, because people who see further than others are always attacked. But, I mean, I don't understand what the Conservative Party's purpose is at the moment. You know, they are just squabbling amongst themselves, not showing much in the way of adequate leadership and just waiting, you know, I hate this vet analogy, but they're just waiting for the vet to put them down. Now, I would rather have one last roll of the dice. If they want another roll of the dice, they could go for somebody different from what the sort of people that they normally get. You could say Rishi is. See, the problem with Rishi, he's such an intelligent man. He's such an obviously decent man. But, you know, there is no, he is not a decisive figure. He absolutely doesn't really impact on people and make them feel that what he says matters. Yeah, I, I was Mrs. Thatcher's youngest minister for four years. Mrs. Thatcher was a very difficult woman. I used to treat me with even more contempt than my mother ever did. But <laughs> the thing about Margaret Thatcher was she knew what she wanted and she got on with it. And you couldn't ignore Margaret Thatcher, but you can easily ignore Rishi Sunak, sadly. Well, uh, great to talk to you, David, as always. Uh, rather grim news, but uh, thank you so much for your time. That's uh, former uh, Conservative Minister David Mellor. Uh